Now we need to move on to the second topic of this section, which is sample size. Now sample size is something that has to be figured out ahead of time by researchers and pollsters because they need to know how many people they need to talk to in order to have the survey or how many tires they need to you know, test, that kind of thing. So a sample size is a question of how many. How many are we going to go look at? Now this particular one is how many are we going to talk to or look at to get a proportion estimate, right? to estimate a single proportion P. Right? Okay, well, it depends on a lot of things. It depends on the confidence level that you want and the margin of error that you're willing to live with. And we have two formulas here, and they are on the exam formula sheet, so you don't have to memorize them. It's just a question of knowing which one to use when. All right, well, what's the difference? Well, this one on the left has a prior estimate, if you can see that. So prior estimate means from the past, right? We have some old study or survey. So past survey or study gives a p hat, right? So we have some old survey, old study. Well, I guess I said I said old down there. So hold on, let me just say past survey or old study. There we go. <laughs> and then this one is we have no old study, right? No old study available. No past data. Okay, and that's it. So you just have to read through the problem. Now there's a couple other things to note, which is when we find our answer, we're going to have to round up. Now, through the entire course, we've just done regular rounding. Regular rounding is, you know, if it's four and lower, you leave the number. If it's five and higher, you round up. Regular rounding. But this particular item, sample size, um, for both the formulas, actually all three of the formulas, there's one coming in another page, will all be rounded up no matter what. And in this particular bit, the margin of error has to be a decimal. So let me give you an example. So it's often written as a percentage. So if they say, let me just make it up, 2.5%, um, actually, they'll say it this way. Usually the word within. Within kind of cues that it's the error. So they'll say 2.5% means that error is 0 0.025. Right? So within, when you see the word within, that's a cue that this is the error that we're talking about. And when they say it as a percentage, you have to write it as a decimal for proportion ones. That's not a problem with other problems, but it's a problem with proportion ones. And just a reminder to everybody that Q hat is one minus P hat. We learned that in chapter six and it's still the case now, so no biggie. Okay, so let's put this into practice. Suppose a researcher wants to know what proportion of US college students do not have health insurance. How many, hmm, that's a Q, and I bolded it in here because I wanted to, to bring it out, but that's the key word that you're going to be looking for when you look at a problem like this. This is how you can tell it's a sample size question because it'll say how many. So how many college students would the researcher need to pull if, and we have to show all the notes and, and work and results and all that stuff. Okay, so let's start off at the beginning. So the researcher wants 95% confidence with a 3%, oop, within, see, within, a 3% margin of error. So this is what's typically used by news organizations, just FYI. Okay, so the formula. I'm just going to write it right here. It's, I don't have a prior estimate. I don't have an old survey or anything. So I'm going to have to say N equals 0 0.25 times Z. Alpha over 2 is a little notation. You can kind of drop the alpha over 2 if you don't want to write it. It's fine. Okay, so that was the formula, and then I'm going to put the substitution right down here, actually, right below it. Okay, so that's equal to 0.25. Now I know the error because the error was given. It says right in here that we want a 3% margin of error, right there, right within a 3%. So that means that error is 0 0.03. So that goes right there. Now the only question is, how do I find the Z that goes on the top? 
Well, we learned how to find critical Z values in chapter or section 9.1. It's also in your yellow packet, the instructions, if I scroll back here. Oh, critical Z values, look right there. So stat, calculators, normal, click between, put your Z level in. Simple as that. So let me go here, stat, calculators, normal. I'm going to click between, and I'm going to put my 0.95 in because we had a 95% confidence, and I click Compute, and I get 1.96. Simple as that. Okay, so this is 1.96. I'm going to write those instructions for myself. I changed the color just to make it really obvious <laughs> that that's the Z. So if the Z is 1.96, we find it with stat calculators normal. All right, now suppose they want the 95% confidence. Oh, and I should highlight that because that's where that's coming from. So that bit is giving us the Z, right? So we still want 95% confidence, great, but now they want a 4% margin of error. Hmm. Okay, so that's going to change my error to 0.04. My Z doesn't change because my confidence is still 95%, so that's still going to be 1.96. Oh, and I haven't actually found the answers to any of these. Let me let me write this down though, and then I'm going to find both of them. So n equals 0 0.25, z over 2 over the error squared. So the substitution, and I'm going to find both results. I haven't found the results yet for either one of these. 0 0.25, and then it's going to be 1.96 divided by 0 0.04, and then squared. And just think about this for a second. Which one's going to have more people in it? Hmm. Is it going to be more people if you want to be more accurate, which is up here? 3% margin of error means your window is smaller, right? It means your confidence interval window is smaller. So down here, it's going to be larger. Hmm. All right, well, we'll find out when we go do it. So let me grab Desmos. All right, Desmos. Okay, so we type 0 0.25 parentheses, then 1.96 divided by 0 0.03, and then close your parentheses and square it. This is the part a lot of students forget. You got to raise that to the 2 power. I'm doing that with my caret button, which is above my 6, my shift 6, but you can also do it with the um, A squared button right here. So if I get rid of that and then I hit A squared, boom. There it is. So it's 1067.11. So let me go back here. So the answer, the result, is 1067.1, but we have to round that up to 1068 people. Well, actually, this was college students, right? College students. Not that college students aren't people, but you know, just to be more precise. We have to round up. Right? You must go up, even though that was only point one, it has to go up. That's what I mean by round up. Right. Now what if I go with point oh four? I don't think it's going to need as many people because that's going to be a messier interval. It's not as accurate. It's not as pinpointed as precise. So I'm just going to copy and paste. That's the beauty of Desmos. And there we go. I was right. Look, it's less people. So 600.25. 600.25, which rounds up to 601 college students. And you might want to make a little note, round up. Even though it was only 0.25, we round up. Now we just learned something, right? Increasing your error, right? We just saw that. We went, we made our error go from 3% to 4%. When we did that, it meant that the sample size decreased. which means they have an inverse relationship. So 
and this is going to come in handy in a few pages as well. So if you want to think of it this way, they're on a teeter-totter together. You have error on one side, you have sample size on the other side. If your error goes up, which is what we did up above, our error went from 0.03 to 0.04, right? When your error went up, your sample size goes down. Which, by the way, also means the reverse is true, right? Which I didn't do, but you can imagine if error goes down, if I had started with this one and gone to that one, if error went down, my sample size goes up. They have an inverse relationship. They're, it's like they're on a teeter-totter. When one goes up, the other one has to go down. All right, now suppose we had a 3% margin of error again. So we, we kept the 3% margin of error, but this time we have some old study from 2016, and it says 8.6% of US college students do not have health insurance. Now find the sample size, and it's still 95% confidence. That part hasn't changed. So I'm not messing with my confidence here. I'm messing with, um, in this case, the formula, because if I have an old P hat, which I do, I'm going to label that um, right here. So this guy right here is P hat. 0.086. All right, so that means that the formula I get to use is the one on the left up above. It's P hat, Q hat, Z over the error squared. Okay, so p hat, p hat is 0 0.086. There's p hat right there. Now q hat is a little weird because we have to find it. q hat, remember, is 1 minus p hat. So that's 1 minus 0 0.086, which is 0 0.914. So q hat is 0.914. If you don't believe me, you can check me on your calculator, but it's true. Okay, so there's P hat, there's Q hat. Now, like most things with mathematics, when we write with the letters, we don't bother with the symbols, but there's a dot in there. Oh, I did write the dot up here, but I didn't bother writing it here because <laughs> I'm just too lazy. There's a dot there as well, right? Because they're all multiplied. But I already know the Z. The Z is 1.96. I haven't changed my confidence through the whole page, so it's 1.96 for all of them. And then I'm going back to a 3% margin of error, so 0 0.03. And then I'm just going to go type this into StatCrunch, or into Desmos, sorry, and get my result. Okay, so Desmos, let me grab it. Okay, 0 0.086 times 0 0.914 times, and then 1.96 over 0.03 squared, like that. And if you want to put these in parentheses, you can. I mean, it's not going to change anything. It's just, it's a different way to notate multiplication. But it's still 335.5, which would round up to 336. Okay, so now let's compare. We already compared A and B. So when you compare A and B, that gets you this note. But now let's compare A with C. A was we had no prior estimate. When we had no prior estimate, we needed 1,068 college students. But when we have a prior estimate, we only need 336. So having that prior estimate means the sample size decreases. Having a clue as to where P is gives you, means you need less sample in order to verify that, right? Smaller sample, a smaller sample to verify it.